Hey everyone, welcome to the third episode of Chat with KJ. Today I have a very special guest with me who is head of customer support at Rich Ads. If you don't know Rich Ads, they used to be uh, Rich Push before, one of the biggest push notification uh, network, advertising network. And she has five years of experience working with the ad network. So today we will talk about push notifications and how uh, Rich Push is getting things done, being one of the biggest um, push notification networks. So, Let's dive right into it. And first of all, thank you, Dario, for joining our show. How are you today? Uh, hello. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, thanks a lot for your invitation. I'm really happy to be here today. And I really enjoy, uh, enjoy that I will represent our company. So everything is fine. And how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. So, yeah, great to have you here. And thanks for your time. Thank you. So uh, b before we move on to um, uh, other things, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do. Yeah. Um, my name is Daria Maichuk and I'm head of customer service at Richard's Advertising Network. And uh, I have experience in this sphere over five years. And uh, um, firstly, I worked as a senior account manager on our platform and I worked with the top clients on our platform. So I know how to work with uh, all verticals uh, in this sphere. And that's a great plus for me now. Right. Sorry. And and where are you based in? Uh, our company is located in Cyprus, but uh, we are working remotely. So we're living in uh, all countries now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So a global company. Yeah. Right. Okay. So how, how you uh, tell us a little bit about like uh, how you got into uh, or industry or in advertising industry or with Rich Push? Yeah. Um, firstly, I studied with, uh, I worked with a lot of marketing agencies mm -hmm. and that, and then I started to work uh, in our company. And uh, firstly, it was also a new sphere for me as uh, I started when push notification just appeared and uh, I see how this uh, format only grows. And it was a really interesting experience for me. And uh, I also learned our clients how to work with this um, vertical, uh, mm -hmm. with this format and how they can optimize and scale their campaigns. And then uh, after I have uh, some experience with this format and when I understand how to work with it properly, I can work with the top clients on our platform as senior account manager. And yeah, now I'm working as the head of customer service and uh, I worked with account managers and uh, with uh, support managers. Right. Interesting. So, so, yeah. yeah. So uh, just one question. Uh, which role sure. do you enjoy most as an account manager or, uh, um, you know, customer success manager? <laughs> Um, it is a difficult it's question. Difficult as, question. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like to work as account managers as I usually I don't have uh, common uh, problems um, yeah. uh, with the clients. They usually have different uh, uh, situation and uh, different cases. And it was always interesting for me to work with uh, different verticals and uh, seeing how we can optimize them, how we can uh, scale them. And but for now, it is also interesting role for me as I can uh, use all these knowledge uh, that I uh, got uh, when I was account manager and uh, give this information to our new managers and teach them how to do it properly. So it is really interesting for me now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I love the idea that you worked, uh, you enjoyed more as an account manager because you have a hands-on approach there and you have access to so many things to learn. And I guess, I, yeah. I, yeah, that's something if I mean, if I was working in a uh, advertising network I'll be working there as well because it gives you uh, knowledge about so many things so how is it working at uh, Rich Push like like uh, how is the company environment and all that uh, I really like uh, working in our company. We have uh, more than 100 people here and yeah. I think that all these people are really they are really professionals and uh, we have a lot of uh, big departments such as my department customer success so we have really good uh, marketing teams they help us uh, to write as uh, a blog to provide the webinars for our clients so our clients can see our webinars and to understand how uh, they can create campaigns for example and how to work with specific uh, verticals uh, also i can mention that we have a traffic team and product managers that create really good uh, new features uh, that can help our clients to succeed 
and uh, as um, I really like it as it uh, I can work remotely for our company after COVID time and uh, I can um, see the world and walk uh, and do my best uh, for my job yeah, in any place. Yeah, living the dream. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> living the dream life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so now let's move on to Rich Push uh, or Rich Ads. Yeah. Uh, now as it's called i still somehow call it rich push <laughs> so <laughs> your main vertical is push notifications right uh yeah it is our main format but uh mm-hmm. after 2019 yeah, we start to work with also uh some new uh formats such as in page pops traffic mm-hmm. and domain traffic and we try to scale yeah. them now too yeah interesting interesting so let's move on to push traffic uh or, yeah, or, sure. or yeah. So can you explain a little bit for our audience uh, p- how push notification work for mobile advertising? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, I would like to start with the definitions. Mm-hmm. And uh, our company uh, offers web push notifications mm-hmm. that are sent via browser. And these notifications are well known as a new type of uh, advertising. And there is also another option that is well known on the market, such as push ads uh, that are sent for um, via applications. And these are two different ways to work with the clients and where push are looking for new clients and push ads uh, from apps, they're working for engagement and so on. So we are going uh, to discuss the first group with which we are working and push ads that are used for advertising. Mm-hmm. And as uh, they are sent via browser and uh, it means that they can che- achieve any uh, device that has browser, for example, mobile, tablet, and desktop. And answering your question, how push notification work for mobile advertising, I can say that on our platform, we have mostly 18% of mobile traffic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, as far as I can see the good results here, I can say that uh, this um, uh, uh, traffic really good works for our clients. And uh, I also want to mention that nowadays people spend a lot of time with uh, their mobile phones yeah. and yeah, as far as push notifications, they're very noticeable. They appear on the main screen of the phone. Uh, so push ads have really good results uh, and uh, they can achieve potential clients everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting how mobile has picked up. I mean, two, three years ago, uh, there was still, you know, massive uh, um, like chunk of traffic was coming from desktop as well. But now as everything is moving on mobile and I, be- I do believe like, even in push notification, Chrome has more traffic as compared to like, let's say, iOS or Android. Yeah, there's more Android traffic as uh, compared to iOS. Is that true or it's just me assuming things? Uh, from a point of view, yeah, for mobile traffic, um, mobile traffic has really good results as uh, mm-hmm. uh, people think that it is a notification for them as they're really similar uh, to messenger message from Messenger. And people think that it is important notification for them. Okay, now let's talk about like you know launch launching the push notification ad network and how uh, Rich mm-hmm. Push or Rich Ads was launched and all that. What was the what is the biggest challenge you faced in like launching new push notification and advertising network? What were a few challenges for mm-hmm. a push notification network? Mm-hmm. Uh, Rich Ads. Um... Uh, we f- we was founded in 2018 and we started only with push notifications. And uh, then we added a new ad format such as pops in page uh, and uh, direct traffic. And then we changed our name to reach ads. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, as a lot of people knew us as reach push. Yeah. And um, yeah, I want to mention some difficulties. Uh, so the main difficulty was to find, uh, to find the publishers. Yeah. that uh, we're ready to place the subscription mm-hmm. window to, uh, to the size. And as far as we know, to start receiving push notification, we should to agree to, the, uh, to receive them. And you can't add push notification on the website like a banner ad. And uh, one more thing that wasn't easy for us uh, to involve uh, webmasters in testing this uh, brand new format and explain how to work with it, yeah. as it was something new for them. Yeah, exactly. And as, yeah. And uh, the other problem was to, to create a team of professionals in a new niche. Mm-hmm. As, 
yeah, here at Free Chats, we pay a lot of uh, attention to our team and it wasn't easy uh, for us to find all these brilliant people and to work now for this adverti for our advertising platform. And uh, yeah, and as you can see after five years, so we are still here, which means that we went through all the difficulties. Yeah, totally. I mean, you guys did some really amazing job. That's why, and the, and your branding was really strong. I mean, just imagine like I still, you guys changed your name uh, from Rich Push yeah. to Rich Ads and I'm still calling it Rich Push because, you know, it's, it's that strong yeah. branding. Um, yeah. Some really good uh, work out there uh, from your marketing team. And I totally agree with you. Like with Push, it's not, it wasn't easy for so many Push networks because it was totally new, something new. And, and, and it's really hard to introduce something which is new, totally new and not already there uh, to the people or to the organizations because, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's always a challenge and um, challenge to introduce these formats. Um, I was actually talking to someone and they were exactly saying the same thing. And another thing is for mainstream tra traffic sources or mainstream networks is really hard because um, um, I mean as, as compared to mainstream ad networks people don't realize the potential of push traffic and how push traffic is uh, um, picking things up so yeah as compared to traditional uh, ad formats and stuff like that many advertisers actually struggle to understand the um, importance of push notification. Um, I can see that we had some technical issues <laughs> for, yeah, so welcome back. That's normal. That's, uh, yeah. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, like, could you uh, please explain what makes push notifications ad so effective and how they differ from traditional display ads? Uh, yeah, uh, from a point of view, push notifications are really visible and they can fight with the banner blindness. Mm -hmm. uh, push notifications are really similar to the messengers from messengers. And um, when you check your mobile phone, you can really uh, think that it is a personal message for you. And if you're talking about desktop, it's the same thing. And also push notifications are similar to system alerts. For example, it is really uh, good working if you're working with antivirus orphans. And you can use uh, the logo of the browser, for example, Chrome or Edge, and you can think that it is a system alert and you need to, to check your system so it uh, will work properly. And uh, if we are talking about um, mobile advertising and mobile traffic, it is a direct interaction with the user as the people think that it is a personal message for them. Mm. Uh, also, uh, push notifications are cheap, and on our platform, uh, the price starts from zero point zero point zero zero three dollars for tier three countries, and uh, it is really good prices for this ad format, and you can uh, achieve result good results here. And for push notifications, we don't have uh, a really strict uh, rest no, we don't have restrictions for some verticals. For example, for gambling, for betting, and adult dating. In comparison to Google and Facebook, where you can't uh, launch this type to, I was, of verticals. I was going to say you guys are not Facebook because <laughs> oh gosh, it's so annoying to deal with those people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but, and it is a plus that on our platform yeah. you can launch such verticals. Yeah, yeah, more affiliate friendly and more uh, advertiser friendly platform. I totally yeah. agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, like, let's say the, the advertisers who want to start with push notifications, uh, what mm -hmm. advice would you give them? How they can start, or what are the, your tips who are looking? to start advertising on push notifications? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, newbies, um, they should understand what verticals are working good mm -hmm. uh, for specific traffic source. And they can always ask this information their account managers. For example, on our platform, we, we really can recommend to work with antivirus, gambling, betting, adult dating, and crypto offers. Uh, and uh, when you're a newbie, it will be better to start with the cheapest vertical, such as uh, adult dating, for example, and sweepstakes. SCPA is not so high here, and you can have enough budget to test uh, several geos, for example. 
and also we recommend uh, to ask your account managers for white list mm -hmm. as um, on our side we really have enough statistics to understand what uh, subscriber list will work better for specific uh, vertical and specific geo and we can provide our clients with it so you will not waste a lot of money and we will not waste a lot of time to test and understand what really would work for you okay off the topic uh, uh, when we talk about your platform um, is it only self-serve or you have managed campaigns as well uh, our platform we have also uh, full managed campaign uh, accounts and uh, if you can if you have opportunity to add more than 500 dollars on our platform we will provide you with any statistics if you want and we'll provide you with the creatives white lists and we'll help you to optimize your campaigns and also we have opportunity if uh, you add on our platform as uh, three thousand dollars plus uh, we will it will be full management we can uh, optimize your campaigns instead of you and you will only check your results yeah exactly that's that's something i always advise people that look at managed uh, options uh, of course they won't be you know cheap especially if you have hundred or two, a couple hundred dollar budget but it's good um, it's really good if you have a uh, you know healthy budget and if you want something serious it's uh, uh, this is a great option because in this way you are handling uh, handing your offers or your campaigns to the people who already know the yeah. platform they know what's going on so it's really easy uh, to scale those campaigns and you can actually just focus on uh, scaling your campaigns and leave rest to the uh, your partners you're working with. So that's one uh, really great feature you guys have. Um, and mm -hmm. always look for um, you know uh, the networks who do offer these kind of managed campaigns because that that saves a lot of time as well. I mean, just consider this for for an advertiser um, you know who, who just wants to start off and they want to scale or something like that. They, um, uh, they, uh, not everyone has you know time to hire their uh, more media buyers or their creative teams and stuff like that so for this kind of thing you don't have to create uh, creatives or you know spend time on optimizing or anything like that you don't even need media buyers and you can actually work with the network on managed campaigns and that's something really good uh, thanks for actually sharing this now what are some creative ways brands can use push notifications to engage their customers let's move on from affiliates to brands a little bit yeah. uh, push ads that can be much more creative and engaging that huge ads and uh, the same is that that we don't have uh, a lot of limitations on what you can place on creatives and uh, the other option is that push ads so they really looks like a message from messengers and here we have really good opportunity uh, to communicate with the users as we know them for a long time and on the push ads we can say hi we have a personal offer for you we have personal message for you and people will think that oh really it is a personal message for me i need to check it mm -hmm. And for example, for adult dating, uh, people can um, use the selfies of girls and they can write such messages as, hi, my name is Diana and I'm in the same city as you. And people really will be interested in it as it is a personalized ads and these type of ads, they're working really uh, well. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, that makes sense. So um, by the way, um, um, I have a question now. I was thinking about it. Like normally, mm -hmm. uh, some advertisers or brands think like you know, the, uh, push notifications have limitation when it comes to traffic volume. D uh, do you agree with that? Or how much volume can push actually generate? Like how much uh, volume are you guys generating on a daily basis? If you have any idea or information, you can give us a little bit. Um, I think it's a good question and. Um... I want to tell that we really have uh, good volumes as we have our traffic team and our traffic team uh, every day they are looking for new publishers and they try to add a new good uh, subscriber list on our platform. And uh, on our platform we have uh, four categories uh, of subscriber list. It is premium, standard, remnant and new. And I want to mention that premium subscriber list, uh, they are really good working as uh, our traffic team, they found that uh, this uh, category has the best conversion rate and 
uh, some people can say that, uh, okay, they're limited, but you, we can also scale on them yeah. if we are working with the CPC. Mm-hmm. As uh, we are working with CPC and uh, in the auction, we, have, uh, we can have more traffic. Right, right. Okay, that makes sense. And about impression, mm-hmm. if, if we're talking about some statistics, yeah, we have more than 5 billion impression per day. Wow. We have a lot of uh, yeah. traffic, yeah. That's, that's so it depends on your yeah. targeting. That's, that's massive. Okay, now, um, yeah. you don't have to answer this, but I, I will ask uh, for the sake of uh, our viewers. Uh, how, like, uh, can you give us an average, like, um, big advertisers, let's talk about, how much are they spending, um, especially in affiliates, like big affiliate advertisers, how much are they spending on daily basis on reach ads? Can you give us a little bit estimate? Uh, we have a lot of uh, big clients and sh- uh, it depends on the verticals that they are working and I can say that the biggest uh, clients are in the vertical such as uh, antivirus, uh, gambling, betting and something like that. And uh, do you want to ask about spend? Yeah, how much yeah, they can yeah. spend on our platform uh, daily? Uh, okay, um, our biggest client, we have a lot of biggest okay. client, but uh, uh, the um one of them can they can spend even five thousand dollars per day and it is only on antivirus uh, wow. vertical okay. okay yeah it is only antivirus and they also can work with other verticals too interesting so we are really good in these uh, type yeah. of verticals interesting interesting so th- there's a lot of margin for affiliates to actually um scale in this vertical understood okay now um let's talk about um how has landscape of push notifications advertising changed over the years and where do you see it moving forward what do you think is the future of uh, push notifications mm-hmm. uh, when this ad format just appeared it was in 2018 mm-hmm. uh, it was skyrocketing as it was something new and uh, uh, no matter what product you were promoting the results were really great and first of all it was a user's reaction to something new Mm-hmm. And this ad format was unusual, visible, and users reacted to them very actively. And then, after a couple of years of popularity, we have we hear such messages as uh, uh, push notifications they will die soon, and a uh, new update of Chrome will kill them, and something like that. And the year passed, and uh, all we see is that the volumes of push notifications are still growing, mm-hmm. especially on our side. And yeah, push ads are still alive, and it is our main format now. And um, also interesting fact that um, uh, we saw a growth of uh, number of campaigns even uh, at the start of the COVID time, as people spent a lot of time with their devices, with their mobile phones and desktop, as they have enough time for that. And uh, this year, uh, we are waiting uh, for the next uh, Safari update, mm-hmm. and they um, it will allow uh, push ads for iOS users. So we think it will be the second birth of this format, and we are really waiting for it. Yeah, exactly. And you know that's strange. I mean, uh, last few years we were talk, uh, we were hearing talks that push notifications are going to die and it won't be able to work anymore. And I've been talking to people, and they're saying like next few years they are used for push notifications because uh, we may even say uh, in-app notifications coming more mainstream as well. And there's going to be more volume in this uh, particular format uh, as usually uh, you know opposed to what people uh, usually think that it's going to totally die down so that's uh yeah so now let's move on to like um uh, next question can you walk us through the process of setting up a push notification advertising campaign how do like let's say if i want to start a push notification advertising campaign what's the right way to do it or how you would set up a campaign on uh rich ads mm-hmm. Uh, Okay, sure, I can explain. And I want to start that uh, we have uh, uh, three methods Mm -hmm. how you can set up campaign with us. First of all, it's uh, target CPA, performance mode, and manual CPC. And I want to talk about them. Mm -hmm. Um, We usually recommend uh, our clients to set up postback with us so we can see the results and we can help them to optimize and uh, we can uh, help them how to add uh, blacklist properly and micro-beading. 
And uh, when you set up Postback with us, you have a lot of opportunities of our platform and you have opportunity to test target CPA campaign, for example. If you're talking about target CPA, you only need to uh, put your link for your offer mm -hmm. and put CPA goals that you would like to achieve. And our system, it will optimize uh, your campaign instead of you. And it will add blacklist, micro bidding, and it will be automatically optimization. And from a point of view, it is a really good way if, you, if you're working with a lot of um, traffic sources, if you don't have enough time. And it is really good to achieve uh, results here. And to have a um, new option, it is performance mode. Performance mode mm -hmm. campaign is a type of campaign uh, when uh, um, white list, they change automatically uh, every seven days according to your geo and according to your vertical. So it is also um, really great to test. But uh, I want um, to explain how, it, uh, how we can set up manual CPC campaign, mm -hmm. as it is really important to understand and uh, talk about our features. Uh, when, we are, uh, when we are talking about manual CPC campaign, uh, first of all, we need to start with the creatives. It is better to start with uh, at least five or ten creatives to understand uh, the best approach, mm -hmm. uh, the best approach, what is working uh, for this geo and what creative will bring you the best result. And we usually uh, recommend to start at least with five uh, or ten. And if you have some problems with it, you can also ask your account managers and uh, they will ask uh, designers to help uh, you with it and we can provide creatives uh, for free. Wow. Uh, also on our, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, that's, that's something really important. Uh, I'm glad mm. you guys are offering that. Yeah. Especially if you need to change your yeah. creatives every five days yeah. to have good CTR. So it is, uh, sometimes you don't have any ideas what you can uh, add uh, something new on your text or on your icons and yes. um, banners. Yeah. So our designers, uh, they can help you with it as they also have statistics and they understand what will be better. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can also um, find uh, the pack of creatives on our platform for every vertical for gambling, betting, antivirus. Uh, then we should put your link, put uh, your link for your offer. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then uh, we need to choose the best targeting. Uh, first of all, uh, yeah, we have targeting for geo, for device, for browser, uh, for connection type. Uh, then we should uh, choose a subscriber list. And we can all, uh, we also have targeting for ISP, even for the um, model of devices, if you want, and if you only need mainstream traffic and something like that. So we have a lot of uh, type of targeting. Uh, when we, uh, we usually recommend uh, to separate the campaign uh, into mobile and into desktop, as uh, these devices um, in the auction they have uh, uh, different CPC. Mm -hmm. So it is better to separate them and uh, you will understand uh, what works better for your offer. And uh, after this, uh, you know, if your offer needs specific uh, browser, we can also provide it. For example, if we are talking about antiviruses, our advertisers, they usually separate campaigns into Edge and into Chrome. Mm -hmm. As uh, these two browsers, they have really good results, but they yeah, have different results also for the same reason as the CPC is a different here. Interesting. And uh, yeah, it is a really interesting fact. And uh, usually we uh, say all these advices to our clients okay. and uh, to say how they can yeah. um, work with a specific vertical as there are a lot of rules here. And also for all verticals and for all our clients, we recommend to start with a um, premium subscriber list. As I mentioned before, they have uh, uh, the highest conversion rate and it is um, faster to achieve results even here. And uh, you can always scale with it. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, if we see that uh, specific vertical is working better for specific white list, for example, also antivirus, we can give it uh, when you only start your work, so you will not waste, waste a lot of money to find uh, your white list. Interesting. Uh, yeah. And um, on our platform, uh, we have really good uh, tools for optimization. It is blacklist and whitelist, and it is micro bidding option. Uh, with uh, blacklist, you can um, put your sites and publishers, and you will not um, get traffic here. And with micro bidding, you can change your bid for each subscriber list. So it is really important uh, for your optimization, as sometimes we have a uh, situation as some subscriber lists, they have really um, they have conversions, but the um, CPA is high here. 
So with microbeading, we can decrease bead here and uh, uh, you will still have good results, but it will be cheaper for you. So it is really good too. And uh, automated rules. Uh, if you don't have enough time, we all understand that people have um, a lot of um, uh, traffic sources to test and sometimes it is really difficult for them to optimize all the campaigns and to find this time. Uh, we recommend to set up automated rules so you will not uh, waste uh, your money on publishers and sites that uh, spent a lot but didn't bring you enough conversions. So it is the main rules, yeah, And but uh, we usually check the campaign after our advertisers launch them and we usually send them recommendation what they can uh, improve here. But it is a uh, standard rules. Interesting, interesting. So you guys actually provide advice to your advertiser as well when they Ooh. launch a campaign and, and provide them support. Sure. That's, that's something really good. Now, um, when you was talking about creating different creatives and all that, um, um, one thing which came to my mind is when we are launching, like, let's say, target CPA campaigns, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is one issue which most of the affiliates talk about, and that is, like, uh, these kind of campaigns work fine for, like, let's say, a couple of days and then the performance starts declining or the w traffic volume stops dropping uh, dropping what you think why does that happen and that happens on almost all networks what is your take on it why that happens and how can uh, affiliates avoid that mm -hmm. uh, first of all if you're working about um, target cpa campaigns uh, yeah i agree that First of all, it is better to start on our platform, for example, with manual CPC campaign, as we can find um, correct approach, how we can, uh, what is working, for example, yeah. uh, specific creatives. And then it is a really good option to duplicate this campaign for target CPA as, okay, I find, uh, I found a really good offer uh, and geo for it, and I found uh, creatives. So it is better to duplicate. And it is really important when you have uh, this situation as uh, your campaign uh, start start really good, and mm -hmm. then you think that then you think that uh, the results uh, became uh, bad. Uh, you need to check um, the metrics, such metrics as CTR, and such metrics as win rate. As CTR, CTR will show you um, how your ads are working, and maybe do you need to change them. As we all understand that uh, people, they can check uh, your creatives twice and maybe it will not be interesting for them to click on this ad and do conversion. So that's, it is really important to change your creatives uh, every five days, uh, um, not to burn out your yeah. audience. Yeah, exactly. I think, yeah. I think that's one of the biggest reasons that um, it's, mm -hmm. it's mostly your creatives if you don't change them or just get burned out uh, by looking at the same thing again and again. And they start interacting yeah. with it and when especially when your ctr gets low um yeah. of course it gets penalized and it goes down so you have to have um uh, fresh ctr uh, creatives mm -hmm. and, and a high ctr now when we talk about uh, campaigns what are the most important matrices we should be careful about or we should uh, keep an eye on is it ctr or is it something else uh, I would recommend you to check CTR, mm -hmm. right, and win rate, and uh, also CPC cost per okay. click. Uh, as we mentioned before, yes, uh, CTR is really important to understand how your creatives are working. And you can um, check this metric in split of days to understand how the whole campaign is working and when you need to change your creatives. And you can also check... Uh, uh, your campaign in split of creatives to understand uh, what creatives are working better and uh, you will find uh, the best creatives the best approach and uh, then when you will add new creatives you will add something like this something similar to the previous um, good creative for example um, the same uh, approach for text the same approach for images and you will pause uh, the creatives that uh, didn't bring you enough results and uh, it is also really important to check to check win rate, as uh, uh, here it is the auction, mm -hmm. and we need to understand that it can be um, more new users that also would like to launch uh, this type of offer and yep. uh, to also test this geo. So we need to understand that win rate is really important, as this metric will show you uh, how many bids won the auction and how um, how many yeah, impressions you can get and then 
clicks. So it is really important to check it. And that's why uh, we really recommend to use uh, uh, this option micro bidding if you don't want uh, to increase the bid for the whole campaign, if you don't want to waste a lot of uh, money when you don't understand how it will go in. You can only um, check the subscriber list that for now uh, show you good results. You can increase the bid here mm -hmm. um, if it is cheap, for example, and win rate is low. So you will increase your win rate and you will have more volumes, more conversions and uh, CPA will still uh, good. And even if you uh, if you have conversions, but they're expensive, you can decrease bid for this subscriber list and uh, you will have uh, your target CPA. So it is really important to check these metrics. Interesting. Now, when launching a campaign, what's a good idea to, to start with average bid or to start with the highest bid? Like I've, I've seen uh, people, you know, talking about uh, start with lowest bid so that and, and block all the publishers which are on lowest bid because those are the people other advertisers have like filtered those suppliers so you can easily build your blacklist on other hand there are some affiliates who say like bid the highest so that you get the top traffic um, and, and you know it's not just uh, filtered traffic which everybody else has black blacklisted so, uh, on other end there are a few affiliates who say like you know you start somewhere in average not too high yet not too low so um, first of all now my question is where should uh, what's an ideal start like uh, do you have uh, what would you suggest to start start from the top bid the highest or bid the lowest and another thing is does your platform have a uh, you know, somewhere where people can see what's the average bid and all that, like uh, basically the bids, how many advertisers are bidding or something like that, up, uh, a reporting system uh, or something like that, where you can see the insights. Mm -hmm. It is a really good question. <laughs> <Thank you>. uh, <laughs> it is a really good question and I can explain why. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sure, a bid is changing in the auction as uh, some new users, they can also launch the campaigns and you can check these statistics in reporting in our platform and you will see some uh, insights uh, uh, what is the auction in this geo now? Also, you can ask your account managers about the bids, and they will also send you the volumes and the bids for your mm -hmm. specific targeting. And it is a really um, good um, question as um, when you start with a low bid, you will not um, test uh, all subscriber list and all publishers. As yep. uh, if the publisher is good, sure, we have the auction here. And that's why you will not test uh, enough for uh, good traffic and um, it will not uh, be a good way for start. Uh, if we're talking about top bid, you don't know how your offer is working. You don't understand, maybe it is a new offer and you didn't test it before with uh, um, other ad networks. So you don't understand how it will work. And I can't, I will not recommend you to start with a top bid as you can waste your money and uh, maybe these, um, yeah, then, uh, then, then you will be complaining. Will the, so we usually recommend to start no, with the average bid. As with the average bid, you will test enough traffic, you will test... Uh, yeah. uh, can you repeat, please? Uh, I said then people will be complaining like, oh, Richard doesn't work for me. When they are bidding highest, they don't know if their offer is working. <laughs> Uh, the offers are different, yeah. the offers are different and <laughs> we really need to test it. Yeah. So it is better to start with the yeah. average bid and mm -hmm. then check the results and change the bid with micro bidding and change it when you understand how it works. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Now, uh, do you have any case studies like or, or success stories to share? Um, anything you have or you would like to share? Uh, any client of yours when you was account manager maybe or just now you come across? Some... Yeah, sure. Uh, sure, I have a lot. I had a lot of success stories when I was account manager, <laughs> and um, <laughs> the times are going. And uh, also, we have success stories now. As I told before, we have a lot of uh, big clients now, and mm -hmm. if they're working with us, it means that they uh, they have really good results with us, and they can scale scale with other geos, with other offers, and other verticals. But I want to mention that um, the last year in 2022. Uh, our main verticals were antivirus gambling and betting, and we have really good case study for antivirus. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our clients, he uh, started uh, three campaigns, and he split these campaigns uh, into um, browsers, 
and uh, inter um, basis. I didn't mention it before, but I will explain now. Um, uh, it is better to uh, split your campaign into browsers, as uh, yes, CPC is different, and it is better to test them uh, separately. And it is also important to test um, uh, different bases. Mm -hmm. On our platform, we have the main base. It is the main um, base of our traffic and new subscribers. It is people who see push notifications only seven days. They subscribe to push notification only seven days, and uh, this um, audience is really fresh and yep. it is really interesting for them to do some conversions, uh, so they are really fresh. And our client, he uh, set up uh, three campaigns. One campaign was for uh, Chrome for a new base, and uh, other two campaigns uh, was were for Edge, one for all base, and another one for new subscribers. And after three months of testing, uh, he has a ROI um, 32%, 32%. Amazing. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was really good result for him as uh, he spent a lot of money as and but he have he has a, a good profit as uh, if you would like to start with antivirus, we need to understand that uh, if you would like to test uh, this vertical, you need um, enough money as yeah, exactly. uh, CPA is high here, but profit is also really good. Yeah. And uh, then our client, after maybe two months of testing, he also tapped our new option performance mode. This is automatically whitelist for the vertical and for the geo. And when he tested it, uh, he had a ROI uh, 61%. Wow. It, is, it was also a good result. Yeah, and it, it was our new algorithm, but it showed really good results with our main verticals. So it was a really good case. and. Now we can say that uh, performance mode is really working. Interesting, interesting. And the key takeaway here is that always split tests between different yeah. uh, browsers, different devices. And that's important as well, even within the, um, uh, you know, the audience type as well, because fresh audience, that will be totally different as compared to the, uh, the ones who have been receiving uh, push notifications for a while. So uh, that's really interesting. Now uh, let's talk about what are the limitations associated with push notification advertising like what uh, you know uh, what are the limits out there or what are the things you can't maybe do with push notifications mm, about limitations i can't say exactly what you can't do mm -hmm. as uh, for example we we don't have uh, any limitation with creatives and uh, you can use any approach if you want and uh, uh, last year, we allowed to test on our platform adult dating, mm -hmm. as so we didn't have opportunity to do it before. And for now, we didn't have any limitations. And now, yeah, you can use a nudity on creatives and nudity on your pre landing page, but you will uh, test specific uh, subscriber list yeah, that allow it. So about limitations, I can't say exactly. Only one uh, scene mm -hmm. is that uh, that on push notification, as we know, we need to subscribe. And yeah. when we subscribe to push notification, we didn't leave any personal data. Right. So, yeah, so we can't um, uh, target, uh, we, do, uh, we don't have um, targeting on interest as we don't uh, know the personal data of this audience. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but uh, as we have enough experience as uh, we tested, a lot of offers with uh, a lot of GS. We can say on our statistic what is working better and uh, what subscriber list you need to test. Interesting. And uh, is there a way we can target audience based on their interests? Like let's say some of them, maybe they like um, uh, games or, or, or some uh, like let's say uh, other audience which is related to like let's say casino um, or, um, or maybe offers or stuff like that. Can you categorize uh, the audience based on their interests. Does your platform offer some sort of like uh, targeting based on audience interest? Like let's say if some subscribers, they could be more interested in sweepstakes, the other would be more interested in uh, probably like finance related stuff and others would be interested in casinos, gambling or stuff like that. Can, can advertisers mm -hmm. target uh, audience based on the interest? Uh, yeah, I got your question, and 
Uh, as far, yeah, as we see enough uh, experience with uh, all verticals and we understand how they're working with the geos, usually we recommend our clients, we have um, opinion how we can set up the campaigns properly and we usually recommend uh, to test um, specific formats for it. Cool. Yeah, free. formats. Uh, no, if we are talking about yeah, push, pops, and domain, and something like that. And also, we have enough statistics uh, to understand uh, yeah, what our traffic, what our subscriber, li subscriber list will be good for gambling, for example, for, gam uh, for betting, for antivirus. And uh, when we check this statistic, yeah, we can provide our clients with a wide okay. list. So we have an, uh, enough data. Interesting. Now, I have them. another question like, when it comes to formats, advertising formats, uh, do you do you have pop mm -hmm. format as well? Pop ups, yeah. Yeah, sure. So wh which one yeah. is bigger, like push notifications or pop or any other format? And can you explain a little bit about mm -hmm. what other formats you guys have and like volume wise, uh, which are the top ones? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, the biggest one is uh, a push notifications mm -hmm. as we started with this ad format. Uh, then. Um, maybe after one or two years. So we added POPs traffic and um, uh, yeah, for now it is a second, but uh, we are working on it and we, are at, we add new subscriber lists and we try to scale this format as this format uh, shows really good results too. And I can say that uh, now we found the best verticals that are working for it. And for now for POPs traffic is really good working gambling, betting, crypto offers uh, and dating. And uh, one um, in twenty twenty two, we really try to scale in page traffic and uh, domain yeah. traffic. It was yeah, it uh, there was new formats for us, but uh, in the end of the year, they really have uh, good results now, and we also understand what verticals are good here. So now we can say that uh, for in page traffic, we really recommend to test. Uh, uh, dating offers, sweepstakes, and uh, in some geos, uh, gambling traffic. And for domain, yeah, and for domain traffic, we usually recommend to test uh, such verticals as also gambling, betting, uh, and uh, finance, as uh, dem uh, we know that uh, domain traffic is a new format and uh, it is uh, more expensive mm -hmm. uh, than POPs traffic as it is new format and we need to understand that CPM is yeah. high here. So CPA also need to be normal. You can't test maybe uh, sweepstakes with this format as CPM will be expensive for you. Interesting. So what are the top geos? Now we spoke about verticals, we spoke about formats. What are the top geos which work best with, with, with the audio mm -hmm. traffic? Yeah. And during 2022, push ads uh, best converted on tier one countries such as Germany, France, Great mm -hmm. Britain, and the USA. And uh, some of the countries uh, they stayed at the top during the whole year. And I also tell that Asian, Asian countries like India, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Thailand showed really good results with uh, gambling, for example. And uh, we. we Think that uh, they will still uh, show good results this year too. And Latin region is constantly growing, so we can uh, tell that you need to pay attention on them. Interesting. So for 2022, which are the most geos you guys are focusing on right now? Or upcoming geos? Because uh, what 20... I'm trying to do here is to, uh, you know, find out what's upcoming so that I can give something to our listeners no. <laughs> or viewers. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, from a point of view, the geos that were in to on top uh, in 2022, they will still are growing in this year. And yet it will be tier one countries such as uh, the USA, Great Britain, France, and Canada is also good. And uh, tier three countries and Latin is uh, really good, has had really good results. And I think that it will have uh, really good results this interesting, year too. Interesting. One thing about India is India, is, uh, India and Indonesia. In Asia, these two countries have massive amount of traffic, but it's hard to find some solid offers for these kind of uh, geos. I think that's one major challenge all affiliates have. Uh, to find uh, good offers for, for India Indonesia? And Indonesia, yeah. No, I think that uh, these uh, regions, uh, we have mm -hmm. a lot of verticals on these uh, 
regions and it is dating and it is gambling um, can, can, can you like team if if an affiliate wants to promote something there help them to find these kind of offers as well or suggest them like what's working what you can do mm -hmm. Uh, I can tell uh, information that uh, last year uh, we have our CPE network and uh, if you would like to, ta uh, to test uh, some interesting offers, you can ask your account managers to connect with uh, other our managers that uh, they're working with this um, uh, mm -hmm. project and they will give you information how you can register with us and uh, how you can take the offers from us and uh, test them on our traffic on other traffic but on our traffic uh, it will be better interesting best. interesting yeah that's that uh, i didn't know that thanks for this information as well and mm -hmm. overall now what you think personally uh, how uh, you know uh, one can personalize your uh, their ads how much that affects like personalizing your push notifications or, or, or pop traffic to the user how how important is that or what role does mm -hmm. it play uh, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, from a point of view, push notifications, they have uh, more personalization that pops traffic. As uh, before you click uh, on the creative, if you're talking about push notification, mm -hmm. you see the creative and you understand uh, what offer you will yeah. see. And uh, yeah, that's why they have personalization. And uh, also um, our advertisers, uh, they can use uh, such things as the tokens and uh, if you're talking about creatives, they can use the token city, for example, and they can place uh, this token in the text of creative. And the person who will see this um, creative, he will see his uh, uh, native uh, city. For example, uh, hi, my name is mm -hmm. and I'm from Chicago, yeah. for example. And you will, it is a really good uh, way of personalization. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, also you can uh, find, you need to test different approaches to find uh, uh, the best uh, approach for your user, different images, different icons, icons and different banners and different text. That's why we, uh, we usually provide our uh, clients um, this possibility to give them our creatives to test too. And yeah, if we are talking about POPs traffic, sometimes it can be um, not so easy to mm -hmm. personalize as uh, people they didn't see any creative they only yeah. redirect to the offer that's why here we need to have really good uh, pre-landing page that uh, take your attraction um, yeah and you will pay attention to this pre-landing page and you will do the conversions the conversions that you need interesting yeah that's that's really important to um i guess another thing is you can use emojis and language which you usually people yeah. use uh, that's important as well yeah. to um, increase totally your agree. CTR. Okay, I think um, yeah. yeah, we uh, we almost reached the end of the podcast. Do you have any final? Ad yeah, before we move on, actually, I have one more question. If it, if someone wants to join in, what are your uh, like minimum uh, deposit requirements, and how they can uh, start working with Rich Push as or Rich Ads? Sorry, as an advertiser. Uh, first of all, our minimum deposit is uh, one hundred dollars. But uh, if you um at one hundred dollars, unfortunately, you will not have account managers that can give you such information as white lists and uh, uh, any other updates. You will work mm -hmm. as self serve self serve platform. And if you have opportunity to add uh, more than five hundred dollars, in this case, you will have your account manager and you will have more information about the statistics and uh, even they can help you to optimize your campaigns. So from a point of view, uh, it depends uh, uh, on your vertical. Uh, it depends on your vertical and how much years you can test. And if we are talking about expensive uh, verticals such as antivirus and gambling, it is better to start mm -hmm. with $1,000. And if we are talking about cheapest, um, uh, verticals like dating sweepstakes and can be enough uh, to test with five hundred dollars and to test several and, years. And how much is deposit requirement for managed accounts? Uh, three thousand dollars. Three thousand. Yeah, okay. three thousand. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Well, uh, th thank you very much uh, for your time and sharing your knowledge you with too. us. Now, do you have any final advice uh, for all viewers 
um, if you would like to share? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, I can say that uh, you don't, um, you need to understand that it is all about testing and um, you need to understand uh, what will be your vertical and on which vertical you would like mm -hmm. to focus, first of all. And for this information, you can always uh, ask your account managers and ask him about advice. And uh, you can know that uh, from our side, we will do our best to help you to succeed and to help you to find this type of offers, this type of uh, geos in which you have the best ROI. So we will do our best and we hope that uh, you will work with us. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much for your time, Daria. And again, Thank the message much. is same. Always work with your account managers, work with your affiliate manager, seek all the help which is available to you because most of the times affiliates do have help uh, they can get, but they don't take advantage of it. So whenever you're working with a network, make sure you, you get that help and work with the teams to improve your performance. So that was it guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching um, and make sure to like this video. And if you have any comments, please uh, do not hesitate to use comments box. And thank you very much for your time and see you next time. Bye-bye.